Hey everyone, we're out here at this local barn and with this funny horse who likes hair um, to talk about how we prevent chronic disease in horses. And today we're gonna meet a really cool horse named Picante. This isn't Picante, he's just another cool guy. Um, and uh, we're gonna talk about a disease called EMS. It's equine metabolic syndrome. <laughs> And you know, with equine uh, medicine today, it becomes kind of like alphabet soup, but there's all these chronic diseases that you can influence just by feeding the horses differently. So it's a combination of changing their fiber, fat, protein, and carbohydrates with a concentration probably on carbohydrates. Those four things um, in combination, and that's what we're gonna talk about today. You know, it's common for people to think, oh, that's just an equine thing. But actually, metabolic diseases and endocrine diseases are really on the rise in cats and in dogs also, and I think in people. Um, cats are prone to hyperthyroidism, um, which, influence, which is also influenced by the diet, um, and dogs are prone to hypothyroidism and Cushing's disease. Cushing's disease in dogs is absolutely epidemic right now. And it, what I have found in my practice is it has a lot to do with, with chicken, eating chicken. And I'm not sure if it's just a chicken allergy driving up the cortisol and stress and um, inflammation, or if there's an actual, if there's actual a combination of hormones that we're um, using in the chicken to factor, when we factory farm it, that drives the disease. But um, between carbohydrates and chicken, it's really, really common in dogs too. That's why just changing a dog to a raw diet, a chicken-free diet can really influence how they do with their Cushing's disease. But let's go in and, and um, meet Cade and Picante and we'll talk about EMS today. Okay, so this is Picante and Cade and we're gonna talk about EMS, a condition that affects horses and can lead to other diseases. And um, Kate and uh, has been just really instrumental in learning about how the best way is to feed Picante. This is, he's how old is he? He's 24. Okay, he's a 24 year old. And what kind of, what breed is he? I, I he's forgot. an Oldenburg. An Oldenburg, okay. It just doesn't stick in my mind. <laughs> um, anyway, sweet guy. And so just a quick version of it though, was that he had insulin resistance, right? Yeah. Um, and his insulin level was, 209. 209. Yeah. And now what is his insulin level? 9.8. 9.8. It was a huge accomplishment. Yeah, huge difference. And like, do you see any ch changes with his energy level? Or you mentioned his fat deposits and he's, yeah. he was depositing fat in different tissues. And yeah, he, he looks healthier and he, he just feels better. He's not as tired all the time. He can work a little bit longer. I mean, he's 24, so it's not a lot of heavy work for him. Sure. Yeah. And how do you feel that you've had some success with this? I mean, do you feel like you can help others? And I mean, you know, it's a big accomplishment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think if people just educate themselves and figure out what their horse needs, it's it's possible for every horse. Yeah. That's so great. Well, let's go into the feed room. We're going to talk about helping feed um, Picante. Picante with his um, EMS. You know, so all the equine metabolic syndrome. Sure, it has to be great. Other endocrine <laughs> issues. There's problems with insulin cool. resistance with it. The glucose basically backs up. All the sugars go in the bloodstream. They can't get into the cells. It can lead to other diseases. And so we want to look at like, what are the nutritional things that we can do, which is like immense, because we can basically change the levels um, right, Kate? Yeah. So Kate's done a ton of work on this, and um, including hay analysis and um, feed analysis. And so we're just talking about the right balance between fiber, fat, protein, and carbohydrates. So let's talk about these things and what we can do. And so what what are you doing with Picante? Um. So feed wise, he gets. I weigh out everything for him. Um, so I know exactly how much he's getting and what he's getting. Um, and right now, in the morning, he gets a pound of this tub grass hay pellets soaked. And a pound soaked, are you are you weighing it when, before it's soaked or after yeah, it's soaked? Yeah, dry. Okay. Weighing it dry. And how much does that come out to about in volume? Um, about a quart. Yeah. About a quart. Okay. About a quart. Okay. Um, 
And then he is also supplementing an alfalfa for him. Okay. Because the hay analysis on the hay that I'm feeding him, it's really low calorie. Um, and it's just low in pretty much everything. It's low protein, blah, blah, blah. So alfalfa, I'm supplementing in so he gets that. Extra and just talking about the Teff alfalfa, they're a yeah. nice combo, right? Because we talked about this. There's extra um, oxalates in the Teff, and that can lower the calcium. Yeah. But then there's a lot of calcium in the alfalfa, so that mixture is great. Yeah. What's the advantage of Teff? Like, why uh, would you? What, what, what's the advantage of it? What do you yeah. think about it? A lot of vets are saying that Teff grass is the ideal feed for horses with EMFs and Cushing's because it's really high fiber and really low sugar and starch. And sugar and starches are what affects EMS the most in their diet. Yeah, um, that's great. Yeah. So, and we talk about with the diet, we talk about something called the non-structural carbohydrates. Yes. And what's the, what's the optimum that you've read as far as what you want? And what are you guys suiting for with the Picante? Um, so the percentage of non-structural carbohydrates in hay and feed should be less than 12%. Yeah. Um, for Picante, I usually shoot for less than 10%. Um, and for in really severe cases of Cushing's and EMS, less than 10% would definitely be recommended by a vet. That's great. Yeah. So we've got the Teff and alfalfa, so we're, uh, and how much alfalfa are we giving? Um, in the morning he gets half a pound, and in the evening about a quarter pound. Because he's he was a really hard keeper before the EMS, um, mm -hmm. and now he's kind of moderate, mm -hmm. but alfalfa is really rich for his gut, and it gives him the runs. Oh man. <laughs> so he can't have too much. much. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And then we talk about the importance of rice bran. Yeah. Increasing fat, you know, it increases phosphorus. Again, that that we need to add calcium a lot of times. A lot of these companies will add calcium as they stabilize the rice bran. Right. Um, but it has, you know, it has uh, gamma arisenol, which is great for muscle tone development. Yeah. Vitamin E, yeah. B vitamins, it's fantastic. Yeah. Um, and so, uh, omega threes. Mm -hmm. But, but what, what, how does it help EMS rice bran? Um, and how much do you give him? So I started Picante on the rice bran when I first started taking care of him so that I could put on healthy fat to develop healthy muscle for him. And as he developed the EMS, um, I looked into the rice bran to make sure it was safe for him. And it's actually, same as the tech, is high fiber and low non-structural carbohydrates. Okay, so, so it's a healthy form of fat, like an avocado for us is a healthy fat. Yeah, yeah. that's great. So how much do you give him? Um, he gets a half pound of rice bran at night. Okay, that's great. Yeah. So, and then what else are you giving him? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that was a bad question. Oh okay. man. <laughs> Here are his supplements. It's not really as extensive as some horses get. No, that's okay. Um, it's nice to keep it a little yeah. simpler. <laughs> I like it to be simple for him, but mm -hmm. he, first his base is the Platinum Performance, mm -hmm. and that gives him all of his vitamins and minerals mm -hmm. on a base of ground flaxseed, which also provides healthy omega fatty acids. Um, mm -hmm. And that just just gives him his vitamins and minerals in a healthy dose. Mm -hmm. And then the insulin wise was recommended by our vet, and it has um, like resveratrol mm -hmm. in it. Um, and it's on a base of yeast. I don't know what that does for him. Probably helps his gut a little bit. But yeah. And yeah. so, and this helps the insulin uh, regulation, doesn't yeah. it? I mean, yes. it's one of the things. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So how much of that does he get and how much of that does he get? Um, he gets two scoops of platinum performance a day and one scoop of it insulin wise a day. Okay. And then um, for, cause he's an old man, he gets um, glucose like when, glucosamine, um, yeah. one scoop of that in the evenings to help his joints stay healthy. That's great. And then how much hay does he get a day? Um, and what kind? He is oh. getting a, um, just a grass hay. Oh, just a grass hay. He gets, I weigh that out too. So he's getting about 16 pounds of hay a day, and then with the soaked hay pellets and cubes, it comes out to like 22, 22 pounds a day. Okay. And you know, I've been researching soaking the hay and how good that is for yeah. these guys. You're supposed to soak it 15 to 60 minutes. Mm -hmm. If you soak it too long, it changes the calcium-phosphorus ratio yeah. in the bad direction. But 
But um, do you ever think about soaking his hay? Or I mean, I don't know. I know it's yeah. hard at, at a facility sometimes. It's to do. really helpful for me to work here because I can do. I get to manage his care as much as I want. That's amazing. Um, but when he was first diagnosed with the EMS, the first two things we did was get him off of his high sugar grain, um, get him a grazing muzzle, and pull him down his grass time a lot and start soaking his hay because he was on an orchard alfalfa mix hay that was really, really sweet. Mm. I mean, when you can smell hay and tell it's really sweet. So he was getting that soaked every meal. Mm -hmm. And then after we got our new hay tested, um, it was low enough sugar that it was safe for him to eat. Yeah, do you remember what the parameters of the hay was? Or? Um, it was, I think it was 16% non structural carbohydrates. Okay. Yeah. And what about the protein level? You know, I have this little cheat sheet. I think it says like the minimum protein level, crude protein we want in a horse is 10%. Mm -hmm. um, and most of the time we're looking at like 16 to 18%. Yeah. What, what do you think on that? And did you, uh, does it make that much difference when it comes to the disease? For EMS, I'm not really sure it makes a huge difference. Mm -hmm. um, but. Just oh, her yeah. muscle tone. Yeah, and, muscle tone. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And then how did you guys diagnose it originally? On the blood work, right? Or, yeah. Or, or you kind of knew there was a problem already? Are you... um, we weren't really sure there was a problem, but mm -hmm. um, Karen, his previous owner, she is a vet, so she got free labs done yeah. at her clinic, and she thought might as well do it. And horse blood can be drawn and turned into a serum for cats. Well, that's right, for the eyes, yeah, right? Yeah, the eyes, and so yeah. she took some of that for her clinic. I have to and talk to her about that. We that's... just tested that, and we <laughs> looked at the insulin and were and so it was, it was 200, you weren't expecting that. Were there other no. abnormalities in this blood work that um, alarmed you? Or? No, that was that was really the main issue for him. Insulin. And then our most recent blood test, he, he was down to 9.8 on his insulin, insulin level, which was a huge difference. Was there um, any other um, things you guys wanted white work blood with? cell count was low. Mm -hmm. um, we're not sure what that was about, mm -hmm. but we're going to test him again in a couple months and see. Where and there's some changes. amazing herbs to help yeah. boost the blood, white blood cell. I can talk to you about that. But Strylus. And, um, okay, is there anything else you want to tell people to sort of empower them when it comes to treating equine chronic diseases and preventing them? Yeah, um, I mean, everybody knows their horse the best, and you have to be the best advocate for them that you can be. Mm -hmm. And if you think that there's an issue, don't let somebody tell you that you're wrong or yeah. that you're acting weird or crazy about it because yeah. Yeah, they, they need you to listen to them. Yeah, I love that. So true. Kate, thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Kate. <laughs> That's perfect.